Intermittent fasting is the most popular diet, and it was actually the most popular diet Googled last year, right? It's changed the way people eat, shifted their meals to specific windows of time. But recently, there have been headlines about intermittent fasting questioning how effective it really is. So today, we're breaking down the science of what to eat when, how to time your meals to help you lose weight, have more energy, and live longer. Joining me now are two world experts, authors, and two of my favorite mics, Dr. Mike Roizen, Chief Wellness Officer Emeritus of the Cleveland Clinic, and the head of our medical unit, Dr. Michael Krupain. Recently, there has been confusion about the evidence for intermittent fasting. For everybody, there was a new study, brand new study came out, I was still when I read it, that says that statistically there was no greater weight loss with intermittent fasting versus regular dieting. So Dr. Krupain, how do you respond to this latest research? I called you as soon as I read it. Yeah, the results of this study were really surprising. But to really understand it, you have to dig in and see what they actually did. So they had two groups. They had one group where they had them eat in a certain window. They told them to eat between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. And they basically told them they could eat whatever they wanted in that time. Then the other group, they said, focus on eating three meals a day, but also you could eat whatever you want. So those people were basically eating whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. And when they compared them, they saw no difference in weight loss between the two groups. But they did see that that fasting group, that group that ate in that window, lost some more lean mass, which is a, is a bad thing. Yeah. Right? This study really, to me, indicates something really important, that it's not just about when you eat, but it's also about what you eat. And so that's why Mike and I actually wrote the new What to Eat When cookbook, because we wanted to combine the what with the when, so give people the ideal way to do this to support their health. Well, you guys are the world experts on intermittent fasting in my book. I and mean, What to Eat When was a big hit in part because you broke it down for us in a way that we could actually make it you know, flow a little more comfortably. But I think you're right. It, what, you know, the food that you're putting into your mouth during that eight hour or 10 hour, or 12 hour window matters. So uh, people hear this word fasting, Dr. Krupain, and they understand the, they get intimidated, right? It's a little scary that something's gonna restrict you from putting food in your body. How do you overcome that fasting fear? Yeah, I think hearing the word fasting is frightening because it conjures up images of deprivation and starvation. But what you have to think about is when you're eating the what to eat when way, when you're doing the fasting that we recommend, it's intermittent fasting and it's designed specifically to not be fasting. It's designed to get you the benefits of fasting without having to deprive yourself. Something you can make a lifestyle, something you can do very easily, very attainable. So Dr. Royston, you, you've been intermittent fasting for two years. Uh, you've kept yourself in tip top shape and intermittent fasting is, has added something to that. And I'd love to hear you explain it. So I'm not hungry at night anymore. I sleep better and I have even more energy. And that's what intermittent fasting has done. When it's done right, it improves every one of the processes of the immune functions. So even those functions, just about every one of those that helps defend us from COVID. So that's when it is done right. Now, a lot of people are stuck at home and feeling like they can't get motivated, but they have a lot of control. And so it's time to take control. This is one thing you can absolutely take control of, both the what and the when to eat. It keeps the routine going. You can organize yourself around it. So I asked viewers to share the results that they've been seeing with fasting. Becca says she is down eight sizes. Look at this picture. That's remarkable. That's and That's Carolyn great. said that she's got 70 pounds off her of her body, over 10 inches off of her waist. And she's joining me now via Zoom. She fasts 16 hours a day. First of all, congratulations. Uh, but I really want to get into this a little bit. Your first meal is at 1130, right? Gives you an eight hour window to eat. So you got to finish dinner by 730. You've been doing this for 10 months. And I've made a big argument that I'm hearing a lot from people who speak about intermittent fasting. It's not just about weight loss. Yes, you will lose weight, but there are other benefits. What, what have you experienced personally? Oh, <laughs> I mean, let me tell you that my energy level, like the other doctor said, is out the roof. And I'm just going to let you know, Dr. Oz, that I'm just so excited about my results to the point where that red dress, I haven't been able to wear anything of that nature in a while, including a bikini. So I just want to let you know that, you know, guess who's rocking one now? It would be me. <laughs> well, it's a great outfit. You'll be wearing it a lot now. I'm sure you are rocking it out. <laughs> absolutely, so absolutely. for anyone who's thinking about it, trying intermittent fasting, what's been most helpful for you to stay on track? Well, you know, during the pandemic, when everything shut down, um, for me, it really allowed me to stay focused. It gave me um, a routine <laughs> and it kept me grounded, really, really kept me grounded because um, while we were kind of locked in the house, right? I, it was so easy and tempted for me to go grab the chips and grab the cookies as I normally did. But instead, I grabbed my sunflower, my pumpkin seeds with my Dr. Oz mug. <laughs> <laughs> Especially proud of you. 
And then I would just sip on some herbal tea just in order to keep myself nice and grounded and keep myself relaxed. Carolyn, I'm proud of you. I want everyone else to be able to copy you. So let's go through three strategies that everyone can use to start with intermittent fasting comfortably. First is eat only when the sun is up. That's group pain is gonna be harder to do this because the sun's not up as much. So the idea here is you wanna eat with the sun and that's because this is all about your circadian rhythm and how your metabolism changes throughout the day. So your circadian rhythm is your body's clock. It's actually set by the sun and your metabolism changes in sync with that clock. And it expects you to eat during the day when the sun is shining and fast when it's dark, when the sun's not out. So when you do this, you actually get this intermittent fasting that we've been talking about where you're not eating for about 12 hours or maybe more, 14 or 16, and most of it's gonna be while you're asleep. So that's even better, even easier. Next, you wanna stop stereotyping foods. Dr. Royce, this is a big deal for you. Salmon burgers, one of your favorite breakfast foods. I, I witnessed it personally. I love salmon burgers for breakfast, and that means you don't have to eat if you will, breakfast food for breakfast and lunch food for lunch and dinner food for dinner. There are no meals for any one food. So Mike loves cold pasta in the morning. Many people have tried that, right? They have cold pizza. So that's having not stereotyping food. You can't stereotype people who eat cold pasta in the morning, though. <laughs> so, so this only applies to foods, not people. It's another reason we wrote this book, though, is because we want <laughs> to show people that there's lots of great, nutritious, delicious things you can eat at any time of day. Yeah, true, true enough. All right. You, you argue 80% of the food's got to be consumed by 3 p.m. Take it, take it away. Yes, Walk so, us through your typical day. So this is my typical day, and this is a salmon burger. I will often have two of them. They taste a lot better than a green smoothie, Dr. Yes, Oz. Yes, they do. Um, so salmon burger right off. And then this is the pesto green beans. And the pesto, it's a special recipe. It's walnuts and pecans and garlic and basil. It's a lot of great ingredients in that. And it really, it, it's spectacular. And this is my favorite snack, of course. I know you like them soaked in water. I like them roasted a little. I have them at 2.45 p.m. And then a small dinner salad. This is actually the snap pea and strawberry. And of course, a glass of wine. But the real key is by 3 p.m., I've had 80% of my calories. And that's the real key to intermittent fasting done right. Why does it matter that you bet you, because normally we backload our calories in America. We have big dinners, right, with our friends. We, we celebrate, it's festive. But you argue front loading makes everything work better. Yeah, and again, it has to do with our circadian rhythm and the way our metabolism changes, because our metabolism actually works better when we're eating during the day. It expects us to be eating food during the day and not eating it at night and it processes it better. In fact, a calorie isn't a calorie isn't a calorie, it turns out. A calorie you eat early is different than one you eat late. There's some research that shows that when you put people on a diet and you feed them the same number of calories, but you feed them either for breakfast or dinner early or late, people actually lose 25% more weight if they eat those same number of calories early rather than late. So that's why we want you to front load the Not a calories. small amount, 25% yeah. is a big addition. It's a calorie discount. It is. <laughs> All right, now here's the big question I got. When do we get to eat this, Dr. Royzen, Dr. Krupain? Look at this, everybody. This apparently is on the what to eat when diet. It's actually in the cookbooks up next. Even if you're fasting, you can't have a sweet treat without feeling guilty. You're going to find out how and when you can enjoy this dessert. Stick around. We're back with what you need to know about the latest research on intermittent fasting. And here's what I want to know. When can you indulge? Specifically, when can you eat this? These babies look spectacular. Right, Dr. Michael Royzen, Dr. Um, uh, Michael Krupain are back. The whole grain and dark chocolate bars are in their brand new book, What to Eat When Cookbook. Dr. Krupain says that just because you're fasting doesn't mean you can't indulge. So when is the best time to eat a sweet treat? So, Doctor, the best time to eat carbohydrates, uh, like fruit and, and chocolate and things like that, is early in the day, before 3 o'clock. Again, it gets back to your metabolism and your circadian rhythm. Your body's actually set up to eat carbohydrates early and process fat later. So you won't be depositing anything in your thighs, which is the big message here. So Dr. Rosen says these no-bake bars have literally no added sugar. So walk us through the ingredients. So Chef Jim Perko, who, uh, our collaborator who contributed this, has, in fact, the raisins and the apricots give it a lot of sweetness. But you start with crunch with the walnuts and pecans, 
Dr. Coupain is going to show you how to make it. More crunch from the puffed wheat, and then, if you will, 70% dark chocolate. And then you get a little vanilla and a little cinnamon to flavor it even more. All right, so there's a whole art form to making these whole grain dark chocolate bars. You can walk through it, and, and there's very specifically, I want to understand the science of pulsing. There's apparently, you can't just all chump it in there together. That's right, you want to do it in the right order, otherwise it won't come together the right way. So you want to start with the nuts and pulse those, then you want to add the fruit and pulse those, then the puffed wheat, and finally the vanilla and the cinnamon, and you just pulse it until it comes together. If you do it the right way, it's sticky, you don't have to fight through it. That's right. Next, you pass it over to Dr. Roizen, who's got a whole art form of transferring the mixture and spreading it evenly in the bottom of the pan. It's a workout. Well, it really is, if you will, functional exercise. The trick is you put this plastic wrap over glass, and then you look at the size. So this is actually really good exercise. So, and... This helps you because you're going to chew it a lot and it's going to be really filling and great tasting. It's not your only activity during the day, of course. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next you got to melt the chocolate and pour it over the mixture. Dr. Krupain, do the honors. That's right, so you want to heat up your hemp milk or almond milk, and then you pour it over the chocolate, you stir it to make a ganache, and then you want to pour it over this uh, mixture in here. Do, do, do this sensually. Let's just see how you do this. Okay. Look at this. Oh, oh, no, oh, oh, oh. in the air a little more. In oh. the air more. There we are. There. And then you All right, and you want to smooth it out a little bit. And then you want to put it in the refrigerator and let it cool down for about two hours or so until it solidifies and looks like the beautiful ones you have. No baking. Over there. Nope, you don't have to bake it. No sugar, no baking, no time really because this didn't take much at all. And it's got chocolate. This is delicious. All right, so we challenge one of our viewers, Kim, who vo bravely volunteered. To, she's been intermittently fasting, by the way, to make these... Uh, you know, her body and her brain work better, but she's going to try these bars at home. She's not tasted them yet, but she did uh, make them for us. So, Kim, how, how easy were they to make for you? It was so easy. Three easy steps, and you didn't even have to turn on your oven. The refrigerator does all the work, so it was really awesome. All right, so this is your first time tasting these. Yep. My first time as well. Are you ready? Let's do it together. Give it a bite. Please describe the heavenly feel that you have in your mouth. It's sweet, it's crunchy, you get the chocolate fix. Mm. It's really good. I like I'm that really the, enjoying this. Yeah, I like that the chocolate smooths it around your mouth so the crunchiness travels every corner of your body. This is very nicely done. For two doctors, would not have <laughs> expected this. Of course, Coupe is a world-class world chef, so maybe I should have. This is, I'm very proud of you. This is very well done. Kim, thanks very much. I'm glad you made those. Share them with your family. Don't eat them all by yourself. <laughs> I will. All right. We're going to put this on the website. And be sure to check out it, uh, the wonderful new book. In fact, pick up a copy and share it with your friends. What to Eat When Cookbook is out now. Be right back, everybody. Congratulations. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new.